31. Let's get right to this breaking news right now. We've had this horrific, deadly crash that has killed three people. Steve on the scene with the details for us, Steve. Well, it's sad. You're seeing school buses. Now that they've reopened both Allegheny and Kensington Avenue, you're going to see little kids going by this scene. And can you imagine being a kid driving through this intersection to and from school every day and what you see at your window? It reminds me of horrific scenes I saw in Camden as a kid, uh, but nothing like the kids to see, here, see here. And now this morning, uh, as the medical examiner showed up and you see police going back to this scene, what a hard job this is going to be because we have been telling you, and if you're just waking up and seeing this for the first time, there is a driver killed in that wreckage and the whole front of that Honda Pilot's gone, but worse, two pedestrians, a woman and man hit, decapitated and dismembered, both under that vehicle and under all the debris. And you can see a part of the steel turnstile on top of a pile of bricks where a victim that was crushed by this car, hit by the impact of it going 100 miles an hour into them and then getting hit by uh, the debris that fell on top of them. And in fact, a lot of that turnstile is this far back from us, you know, 60, 70 feet away. Uh, one good thing is uh, this fellow here hearing me all morning is now waking up because I was afraid he wasn't even alive. Uh, but that's the kind of folks that are here 24-7. Uh, this is the corner where a lot of the heroin and fentanyl use is. And in fact, because it's so busy and so crime-ridden, uh, Philly police now have a beat here. And it was the cop that we were here with yesterday who happened to be here and heard this Honda pilot coming eastbound down Allegheny. You can see it curves right under the L. He hears it, he looks up and sees it, and then sees this accident in a blur. And he is the one that says this thing was going 100 miles an hour or faster. And this vehicle is registered out of Shemokin, Pennsylvania, a town I never heard of. And the one cop that ran it down said it was two and a half hours from Philadelphia in Northumberland County, which is northwest of here. And here is Chief Inspector Scott Small on what he saw and heard from the investigators on scene here. There's a police officer that was actually on a beat out here at Kensington and Allegheny. We always have police out here. And the police officer heard the vehicle coming, then saw it, and believed that vehicle was easily going 100 miles an hour. Eastbound on Allegheny Avenue, then it jumped the curb at Kensington and Allegheny, and that's when it struck a turnstile. We believe it struck three pedestrians and then struck the building itself. Veteran cops said they never saw a more horrific, gruesome scene uh, with these victims. It's really gruesome one of the pedestrians that's closest to the vehicle clearly decapitated and parts of his body dismembered and parts of the body were actually burned because immediately after this accident the engine compartment of the vehicle caught on fire now the other pedestrian that's closer to the building just a few feet away from the front of the vehicle appears to be a female her body is also mangled crushed to the point where all three of these victims were pronounced dead immediately on location. Well, we are humans before we are journalists, and that's why we are staying far back, even if we were allowed closer. And uh, that medical examiner and the, her assistant right here with these hazardous material suits getting a look and getting guided by Philly police about where the victims are and the victims' pieces are. And this is going to be a tough job for them. And you always think about first responders. And uh, boy, uh, does this job stay with you uh, when you talk to them, when they go home to their families? Just horrific. And one cop said this could have been so much worse, judging by how many people were out here, so many people in the path of that vehicle that somehow weren't hit. That vehicle not just missed a whole bunch of people, but a whole bunch of obstacles. He got under the L without hitting the L pillars, without hitting the telephone pole, the street signs, the traffic signs. And because he wasn't slowed down at all, he hit these victims in triple digit speed with that impact. And that's why he hit that building, the Allegheny Station. Now you can see it says Septa Allegheny Station on top. And as the train rolls through this station, as Bob's been telling everybody, uh, good thing too, because LNI is still trying to uh, establish the structural integrity of that building based on the impact that it was hit at. And boy, when you look at that turnstile, those things are as heavy as it gets. And boy, the police are just having trouble walking around that scene there too. So they're getting a little help with daylight and there's plenty of cops here as we pan to the left. But again, there's little kids uh, on these stop school buses 
a lot closer than we are right now. And hopefully uh, the bus driver is keeping the kids' attention from looking uh, out the window and seeing this. But what an awful scene here uh, for Philadelphia. And again, this is a busy stop. And Philadelphia school buses will be going past here to and from uh, their schools because they had probably no idea that they, they were going to come this close to a horrific scene. And hopefully, uh, you know, the police are good with holding up sheets and things, so they won't let any kids see anything. Just awful out here. Why this guy was going this fast, who knows? Uh, and obviously, somebody from Shimokin, PA, if they're not here often, uh, would not know Allegheny Avenue to go 100 miles an hour plus when it curves right under the L and knowing how many people are constantly just lingering around and loitering in the middle of the street, not caring about traffic. Uh, so that's what we had here. Guys? Absolutely awful. Steve, thank you.